What is good is that he recognized the role of France diplomatically, but he still did it. It's not like before. It's a speech full of humanity, so I like the tone he used and the words. He chose well the words he used. They are touching words. Even though he didn't say the word sorry, still he took a big step, a big step. It's a giant step that I personally appreciate very much. OK, to discuss uh, this further, Phil Clark is a professor of international politics at the School of Oriental and African Studies here in London. Um, professor Clark, thanks for joining us. I mean, this, this is obviously an awful, tragic chapter in history. President Macron chose his words very carefully, didn't he? He didn't say sorry, um, but is asking for forgiveness and admission of guilt? Selena, I don't think it's an admission of guilt at all. And, and there's some criticism uh, amongst everyday Rwandans today about what Macron said. Uh, it's true that he asked for forgiveness on behalf of the French people, but in effect, he asked for forgiveness of for the least of France's crimes in 1994. Uh, his admission was simply that France had this very close political relationship with the Rwandan government of the day. But as the Rwandan report into the genocide shows, uh, France's involvement was much more extensive than that. Uh, France was involved in arming and training many of the Hutu militias that committed massacres against the Tutsi population. Uh, they then allowed many of the senior perpetrators of the genocide uh, to seek safety haven um, in, in foreign states. And since then, there's been a systematic French cover-up. So France's involvement in the genocide is much more extensive uh, than Macron talked about today. And, and that causes a, a serious amount of disappointment and anger uh, amongst many everyday Rwandans today. And so, I mean, although Rwanda is today transformed economically, are the ethnic tensions still there? No, I, I've just come back from a, a four-month field trip uh, to Rwanda, and I've been travelling to the country uh, every year for the last 20 years. And, and this is a country that has made enormous strides uh, since 1994. If One of the remarkable things about Rwanda is that, uh, unlike most of its neighbours, it, it hasn't gone back uh, to mass conflict uh, since the genocide uh, against the Tutsi. Uh, this is a, a country that has been very peaceful, very stable, and, and has been making some serious strides. And I think it's for that reason that Rwanda now feels ready uh, to, to start to hold the international community accountable. It's done a lot of the hard work of reconciliation at home. It, it now wants to see international actors uh, fully acknowledge their role in the genocide and potentially even start to make reparations for the crimes that they were involved in in 1994. Right, OK, so why now? Why has Macron chosen this point in history? There's been a positive relationship between France and Rwanda building for the last few years. And uh, this is a, a relationship now that really suits both parties. One of the things that's interesting is that Rwanda has been very careful uh, in the way that it's responded to Macron and very careful to the way that it responded to, uh, to France's report. And that's because Rwanda sees a real benefit, particularly an economic and military benefit, in a better relationship with France. For Macron, this is bigger than just Rwanda. Um, he sees Rwanda as symbolic for his relationship and France's relationship with Africa as a whole. If he can mend fences with Rwanda, it sends a message to the rest of Africa that, that France uh, is a partner to, to trust, uh, an economic partner, a military partner. And so Macron has chosen this time because I think he sees Rwanda in this much bigger Africa-wide uh, push that, that he's in, in embarking on at the moment. Uh, very interesting. OK, thanks, Phil. It was great to, uh, to chat. Great to hear your thoughts. Thanks for joining us on the programme.